Hello friends, welcome to your weekly dose of current affairs, the bull dose for the third week of March 2022. New Miss World has been announced. New book by a former cricketer has been written. There are new sports awards that have been announced and many more news that we are going to cover in this week's class. So if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you receive the notifications of these videos every week when we post them. Let us see these news and many more in this session. So starting with the first one, these are the topics that we are going to cover. So we will see the new Miss World 2021. So who has become the Miss World 2021? This is what we will cover. Secondly, the United Nations has come out with its World Happiness Report for 2022. So we will have a look at India's rank and which country, with the people of which country are the happiest in the world. That also we will try to find out. Pankaj Advani has won Asian Billiards title. So in sports, we have been consistently doing well over the last few months and a few years, in fact. And Mr. Pankaj Advani, who is India's one of the finest cueist, has won his eighth Asian Billiards title. Eighth. So that we will discuss. World Water Day was celebrated on the 22nd of March. We will have a look at the importance of water and the theme for the World Water Day this year. 35th Suraj Kund International Crafts Mela has started in Haryana. So we will see the significance of this uh, Mela specifically, how it promotes handicrafts and handlooms. Then the Sports Star Aces Awards, which are the highest awards uh, given to the sports persons who have the highest accomplishments in the previous year. So since the last year was the Olympics year and Indians scored really well in the Olympics. So we will see who has become the sports person of the year, male and the sports person of the year, female, although you have already guessed the male one. Next Indian economist Jayati Ghosh has been chosen as a member of United Nations Advisory Board. So it's a moment of honor for India that an Indian economist has been chosen on the UN board. Next autobiography of former cricketer G. R. Vishwanath has been launched. It has a very uh, catchy name. So we will see what the name of this autobiography is. Moving ahead, we will also discuss the combined naval exercise dust click. So we will see which two countries, of course, one is India, which other country India has undertaken this joint exercise dust click. Then on 23rd of March, Martyrs Day was observed, right, on uh, the occasion of the martyrdom of Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru. So we will see the significance of this day and we will also see some historical facts that are quite useful from examination point of view. Then Narsing Petai Nageshwaram has got GI tag or geographical indication tag. So what is uh, Narsing Petai Nageshwaram we will see. Then Kuwait. Now this is uh, this is a news that is a bit sobering. Sobering because we are just in the month of March right now and we have not yet uh, you know uh, hit the peak of summers in the northern hemisphere. But still we have uh, Kuwait becoming the hottest place on the earth at more than 53 degrees Celsius already. So it is a sobering reminder of where climate change is taking us, how extreme weather events can have a really, really deteriorating impact and deleterious impact on the human civilization. We are already in, we are just in the month of March. There is April, May and June, the three hottest months to go. But yet we have the hottest place in the, in the world just in the month of March. So that is, uh, you know, it reminds me of the IPCC report that was released a few months back that said that the average global temperature is going to surpass even if the world meets all their commitments towards reversing the climate change. So we will have a look at this news also. Then the Abel Prize which is known as the highest award in the world in the field of mathematics. It is sometimes also referred to as the Nobel Prize in mathematics although there is no Nobel Prize for mathematics. So the Abel Prize has been announced. We will see who the winner is and 
what is the contribution of that person to the field of mathematics then Kerala has become the first state in India to introduce carbon neutral farming carbon neutral farming so it is uh, uh, only uh, you know it's only desirable that we move more and more towards climate friendly methods just like this news has just reminded us so we are trying to do that even at, even though at a smaller scale and finally tennis legend Ashley Barty has announced her retirement from lawn tennis so we will see all these news one by one quite interesting and quite eventful this week has been let's have a look first Miss World 2021 so as you can see in the picture over here in the middle is the Miss World 2021 and her name is Carolina Belaska Karina Bielowska is from Poland, so she is a Polish and she has become the Miss World 2021. Other than that, Indian American Shri Seni. So the woman that you can see here, she is Shri Seni, she is an Indian American and she was Miss USA. So she has become the first runner-up and the second runner-up is Olivia Yes from Court the Ivor who you can see on the right hand side so these are the three uh, top women in the miss world uh, competition this was the 70th edition of the event and it was held in san juan puerto rico sometimes venue also becomes important and india was represented by miss world mansa varanasi but she could not go past the top 13 so out of all the uh, women who were there she was able to make it to the top 13 but not beyond that right so you need to know all these facts who has become the Miss Universe the first runner-up the second runner-up who represented India and it was a 70th edition that took place in San Juan Puerto Rico these are the facts that you need to remember next the UN World Happiness Report now this is an index that does not use any objective criteria for measuring how happy people are now how can you tell that this country is the happiest country in the world and this country is not so happy there is basically a questionnaire there is basically a criteria that is followed so it's based on a uh, you know questionnaire format thousands of people and perhaps even more than that depending upon the sample size so thousands of people are uh, asked to fill the questionnaires and depending upon their response it is measured how happy those people are and based on that this index is launched so the UN World Happiness Report 2022 has come out and apparently Finland has the happiest people in the world or Finnish people are the happiest people in the world as far as India is concerned it has 136th position one of the most uh, you know backward positions in the world that means maybe Indians are not ha not happy right so uh, there are there were a total of 146 countries and India is at 136 position so one of the least happy people right so Afghanistan has been ranked as the unhappiest country with 146 position so it is topped by Finland at the bottom is Afghanistan and somewhere in between perhaps quite near to the unhappiest country is India at 136th rank and the report is published by United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network UNSDSN is the one that publishes this report and it is it is being published since 2012 so it is you can say the 11th edition of the report next Pankaj Advani has won the Asian Billiards title so Pankaj Advani who is one of the most prominent Indian cueists has defeated Dhruv Sitwala to win his eighth title so it is his eighth Asian Billiards Championship he has also won many world championships in billiards as well and this championship was held in Doha which is the capital of Qatar it's in the Middle East overall it was his 24th international title and 8th 
Asian crown. So he has been one of the most successful players in billiards in India. And here is his image as you can see. So Mr. Pankaj Adwani, this is a name that you should remember. Moving ahead, the World Water Day. So since in this particular video we are going to be talking about uh, climate change in two or three news. So there is some synergy between these events like Kuwait experiencing the hottest day in the year, then Kerala becoming the first state where climate friendly or climate neutral uh, farming is going to be practiced. In the same vein, you should also try to imbibe World Water Day. The increasing importance of scarce natural resources like water is being felt and 22nd of March is celebrated every year as the World Water Day and this year the theme is groundwater. So groundwater is the water that is below the surface of the earth. So this year the exact theme is groundwater making the invisible visible. So what does it actually mean? Groundwater is the water that we extract from below the uh, surface through tube wells, through submersible pumps and through other methods. So groundwater making the invisible visible. That means we need to recharge the groundwater levels. Due to excessive farming, due to water guzzling crops, the groundwater levels have been going down in various parts of the world. And in some places, even where it is not going down, it is being polluted. For example, in India, there is a belt known as the wheat and paddy belt that includes the states of Punjab, Haryana, West Uttar Pradesh and some parts of Madhya Pradesh. In these areas, there is extensive and very intensive uh, farming that is practiced, especially the crop cycle of wheat and paddy is quite popular. And paddy is a water guzzling crop. But these are the, you know, the uh, tropical uh, states. So most of the water that they use is extracted from under the ground, which is groundwater. So the water level, like the groundwater level has been going down consistently over the past many decades. And to top it up, these areas have extensively used chemical fertilizers in the last few decades and due to that the water when whenever there is rainfall the, the, due to the seepage of water the groundwater gets polluted so this is a double whammy or a two-edged sword where if you use the water and even if you don't use the water it still gets polluted so that is the problem and this year's theme is trying to focus on the problem of groundwater pollution and groundwater deficiency so groundwater is a crucial resource that provides almost half of all the drinkable water across the world right so this day this year tries to or is trying to focus our attention towards groundwater next the 35th suraj kund international crafts mela so this festival is held this mela is held every year in the state of haryana and this year also it was held at Suraj Kund <clears throat> it was held at Suraj Kund which is in Faridabad district of Haryana so Suraj Kund is a place in Faridabad district of Haryana and it was inaugurated by none other than the governor and chief minister of Haryana so any any time anywhere where you see the names of important political personalities in news they become invariably important for example the governor of haryana bandaru dattatre and cm of haryana manohar lal khatta so try to uh, uh, you know remember the names of at least 10 to 15 governors and chief ministers who are in news for example recently five state state assemblies have been elected so five new chief ministers have been sworn in so try to at least remember the names of those five chief ministers along with the five governors who had who administered oaths to those cms so they really are a good fodder for uh, you know exams so governor of haryana is bandaru dattatre and cm manohar lal khatta they have inaugurated the suraj kund fair in faridabad of haryana it is organized jointly by suraj kund mela authority and haryana tourism in collaboration with the union ministries of tourism textiles culture and external affairs that means it's an international festival where even other countries also participate and this time the theme state is jammu and kashmir state or ut whatever you may choose to call it although it's a ut so the theme state or ut is jammu and kashmir and uzbekistan 
is the theme country right so this is Suraj Kund Craft Fair and these are a couple of facts that you should know about the festival next the sports star aces awards so the sports star aces awards are uh, some of the most popular sports awards in India and since last year was an Olympic year, so the two most prominent Indians who have secured their highest achievements in Olympics won a gold medal, as you can see here, Neeraj Chopra with a gold medal, and Saikom Mirabai Chanu in uh, the silver medal in weightlifting. So these two have been conferred the Sports Star Male and Female Award. So Sports Star of the Year Male Award has gone to Neeraj Chopra. In javelin throw, he had won a gold medal and weightlifting Mirabai Chanu. She claimed silver medal at the Tokyo Olympics. So she is the sports star of the year, female. Both the names you should absolutely remember. Next up, Indian economist Jayati Ghosh. So as you can see in the image over here, she is Indian economist Jayati Ghosh and she has been selected as a member of the United Nations Advisory Board. So it's a great honor for an Indian to be selected on that coveted position. And UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has himself announced his her appointment. So uh, this is a newly established advisory board and this will be on effective multilateralism. So what is multilateralism basically? Uh, lateralism means the number of countries involved. So multilateralism means where multiple countries are involved towards finding solutions to uh, common problems. So that is multilateralism. Bilateral means between two countries. Trilateral would mean between three countries. But multilateral means where multiple countries are involved. So this advisory board will be promoting effective multilateralism so that common problems uh, you know, can be addressed through common effort by multiple countries. It's going to be a 12 member advisory board and it will be co-chaired by former Liberian president and Nobel laureate Alan Johnson Sirleaf. So he's going to co-chair it and former Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Lofven. So these two are going to be, uh, uh, you know, the co-chairpersons, both of this particular advisory board. And Ms. Jayati Ghosh is going to be a member who will suggest measures to promote effective multilateralism. Next, uh, the autobiography has been, uh, you know, released of former cricketer G. R. Vishwanath. So as you can see here, this is the image of that autobiography. This is the title of that autobiography and it is by Gundappa Vishwanath, G. R. Vishwanath. And uh, the name of the book is Rest Assured. So just like there is an expression called Rest Assured, this is Rest Assured. So uh, quite a creative name. Rest Assured and Autobiography. It has been co-authored by senior journalist R. Kaushik. So he was a former uh, Indian cricket captain, G. R. Vishwanathan. And the book traces his cricketing journey. He f played the test cricket for India between 1969 and 1986. So quite, uh, you know, quite in old times he played it. And he made 91 appearances and scored more than 6,000 runs. So any books and authors in which either the author is important or the book is important or, you know, it is into some controversy, the book's name and its author becomes important. So here the person is important and that's why you should remember this name. Next, exercise Daslik. So exercise Daslik is a joint training exercise and it is being held between the Indian Army and the Uzbekistan Army. And quite strangely, Within this week, there have been two instances where Uzbekistan has been mentioned. One is this exercise Daslik and second is that it is the partner country or the theme country at the Suraj Kund Crafts Festival, we just discussed. So Uzbekistan, although it's not a very, uh, it's not a very, very famous or very prominent country, but it's a coincidence that it has been mentioned twice at such a short span of time. Talking about Uzbekistan, it's a Central Asian Republic. And its capital is Tashkent. 
again another coincidence these days a movie kashmir files is gaining a lot of uh, popularity and the same director had made a movie called tashkent files which is about the mysterious death of the former prime minister of india lal bahadur shastri because he died in tashkent while his he was signing uh, a peace treaty uh, between india and pakistan uh, it was a part of the former soviet union so tashkent files is a movie that explores that particular aspect and uh, you know tashkent uzbekistan then uzbekistan in suraj kund crafts fair uzbekistan in exercise dust lake so it all tries to you know somewhere connecting with each other so you should know the capital of uzbekistan which is tashkent so this is uh, happening from 22nd to 31st of march last uh, edition was held in last year in march and the indian contingent will be represented by the grenadiers regiment and it will join uzbekistan army contingent by the northwestern military district so india and uzbekistan are the two countries that are participating in exercise thus like this is the most important fact that you should remember next 23rd of march 1931 is a date that is etched in the memory of those who are keen or who are enthusiasts about modern indian history so 23rd of march 1931 was the day on which bhagat singh sukhdev and rajguru were hanged till death and they were prominent revolutionaries prominent freedom fighters the case in which they were given capital punishment was the lahore conspiracy case very very important this fact is it was the lahore conspiracy case in which bhagat singh sukhdev and rajguru were given capital punishment and there was a possibility that their capital punishment could be uh, you know they it could be rescinded it could be cancelled so a day before the actual sentence was to be carried out their sentence was carried out so they were supposed to be executed on 24th of march but they were executed a day before that you know so as to avoid any kind of protest so as to avoid any kind of changes so 23rd of march 1931 bhagat singh sukhdev and rajguru were given capital punishment and in their remembrance this particular day is uh, labeled as martyrs day although there is another day that we call martyrs day and that is 30th of january because on this day in 1948 Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated so both the days are associated with martyrdom and uh, they can be referred to as such next narsing petai nageswaram has got geographical indication tag so what is a gi tag first of all gi tag is a kind of intellectual property or a kind of uh, uh, you can say it is given to some culture or some tangible thing that is found in a particular geographical location right so G, when a product gets gi tag it gets so many tax benefits it gets so many state support measures so that the particular product can be popularized in a particular place so now gi tag has been given to narsing petai nageswaram which is this particular musical instrument and it is exclusively found in uh, tamil nadu so tamil nadu has got this gi tag it is basically a classical wind music instrument that is traditionally made in a village near kumbakonam tamil nadu so it is uh, you can say it is specific to a particular village in tamil nadu and that's why tamil nadu has got the gi tag so it has a body that is cylindrical in shape as you can see over here and it takes the shape of a bell at the bottom so it takes the shape of a bell at the bottom and this form the nageswaram provides volume and tone the instrument's length is 2 and a half feet so it's a unique instrument it's found uniquely in a village near tamil nadu and it's quite popular there perhaps in the entire uh, south india and it has been given the gi tag that means now exclusively it will be sold in tamil nadu and even if it is sold somewhere else it needs to take license from the government of tamil nadu so this is the latest in a series of products that have got the geographical indication tag 
नेक्स्ट सो कुवैत हैज बिकम द हॉटेस्ट प्लेस ऑन अर्थ देर इज अ प्लेस इन कुवैत दैट हैज रिकॉर्डेड 53.2 डिग्री सेल्सियस ऑफ टेम्परेचर इन इंडिया वेन एवर मर्करी क्रॉसेज फोर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस वी फील द पंच वी फील द पिंच रियली रियली हार्ड इमेजिन वट वुड हैपन इफ द मर्करी क्रॉसेज फिफ्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस इट्स हंड्रेड डिग्रीज फार एन हाइट विच इज सो हाई दैट Uh, you know it has become the hottest place on earth so uh, there is an example last summer birds dropped dead from the sky and sea horses boiled to death in the bay that is how high 53 degrees cent- celsius can be and one of the reasons for that the country continues to burn oil for electricity and ranks among the top global carbon emitters per capita according to the world resources institute so no uh, you know no uh, particular progress has been made in kuwait to generate renewable energy they still burn a lot of carbon to generate electricity to generate uh, you know uh, basic energy for their basic needs they are still not moving towards renewable energy which is what the entire world should be doing right now and which is also what india is doing at a massive scale so kuwait should also do that otherwise you know the global warming is only going to increase so every country should take their own decision now they should actually switch towards electric mobility like electric vehicles and they should switch towards the renewable sources of energy able prize for 2022 which is also known as the nobel prize in mathematics so this prize has been awarded to this gentleman over here his name is dennis panel sullivan so this gentleman over here mr dennis uh panel sullivan has got uh, the abel prize for 2022 he is an american mathematician and this award is given by the norwegian academy of sciences and letters right so he has been a mathematician in the field of topography he he has been given this for his ground breaking contributions to topology in its broadcast sense and in particular its algebraic geometric and dynamical aspects so what is topography in which he has been topology sorry in which this he has been given so topology is a branch of mathematics which was born in the 19th century and has to do with properties of surfaces that do not change when they are deformed so something you know uh, within mathematics this is a branch and he has given significant contribution to the field of topology and that's why he has been chosen for the abel prize 2022 so his name is what is most important to remember next kerala has become the first indian state to introduce carbon neutral farming now there is a misconception that i would like to clear here carbon neutral does not mean that no carbons will be emitted carbon neutral means that the amount of carbon that will be emitted will be equivalent to the amount of carbon that is being consumed so carbon neutrality means that if i am emitting 10 kg of carbon dioxide i am also consuming 10 kg of carbon dioxide so in effect the net effect is zero for example if there is a particular factory which is emitting uh, say uh, smoke so if it is emitting 10 kg of uh, carbon dioxide in a day but it has around it a network of trees and forests that is able to consume 10, 10 kg of carbon dioxide per day then we can say that that particular factory or that particular establishment is carbon neutral because the amount of carbon it is emitting is equivalent to the amount of carbon that it is consuming so kerala has become the first state to introduce carbon neutral farming methods It does not mean that no carbon will be emitted It simply means that the similar amount of carbon will be consumed as well right so in selected locations these uh, carbon neutral methods of farming will be introduced and it has set aside 6 crore rupees in this year's budget for the same why is this very important news although it is a effort at a very small scale because it can have a domino effect on the other states seeing kerala many other states should also start carbon neutral farming because farming 
you know generates a lot of carbon there is a lot of methane there is a lot of carbon dioxide that is emitted by the crops and the fields so it is high time that we adopt this because india is primarily an agricultural state there is a huge proportion of india or indian land where cropping is done so once all the states start adopting such methods we will really be able to reduce our carbon footprint by a huge margin so in the first phase this carbon uh, neutral farming will be implemented in 13 farms under the agricultural department and slowly and slowly all the assembly constituencies and all the entire state of kerala will be covered so we will see uh, you know after some months after a few years what kind of impact does it have and how many other states have actually adopted it so these things take a bit of time but it's a good start and that is uh, why we should give it and finally ashley barty a very prominent name in lawn tennis has announced her retirement so she is a winner of three prominent grand slam titles and uh, she is from australia she australian female tennis player she is and she is just 25 years of age she is retiring after winning three major singles titles in three different surfaces interestingly so she has won three grand slam titles and all in three different surfaces 2019 french open so french open is played on clay so she has won a title on the clay Second, the 2021 Wimbledon, which is played on grass. And third is, in January, the Australian Open. So, Australian Open is played on the AstroTurf. So, all the three on different turfs, clay, grass and astro. So, after winning just three Grand Slam titles, although it's a great achievement, and at the tender age of 25, she has announced her retirement from all forms of lawn tennis. So, Ashley Barty from Australia and the three titles that she has won, all these are important pointers from the exam point of view. So, that is pretty much it. Uh, it was quite an eventful week. You know, ranging from sports to politics to climate change to culture, so many things happened and so many things keep happening every week. And this is our sincere endeavor to bring the most important news of the week in a compilated form in this video series. If you think that this video series has added value to your time, please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and also let us know in the comment section what more can we do to make it more and more valuable to you our endeavor is to make these 20 to 30 odd minutes so much valuable to you that if you watch this video you should be able to revise the entire week's most important current affairs in these few minutes so we do not claim to cover all the relevant news in this uh, short period of time but still the most important pointers that you should not miss is what we try to cover over here also you can visit our website which is gk.hitbullseye.com gk.hitbullseye.com and you can register over there there are so many uh, resources that are available free of cost on the gk.hitbullseye.com also subscribe to this channel there are so many videos that we post here that can be of use to you there are links given in the description below accessing which you can access various types of platforms on which hit bullseye is there that is all for this week stay connected with us we'll also see you next week thank you so much and take care